This video is sponsored by AccuSonos, and hang around to the end to find out how you can win one of their awesome plug-in bundles worth over $350. Hey and welcome to another tutorial with me Dom and today I'm going to show you how I made this. This is a shot from my recent collaboration I did with Curtis Bouty, all about some of the bizarre suggestions that have been made over the years to help with climate change. If you haven't seen it yet, then check it out on the link above. I promise this tutorial will make a hell of a lot more sense if you've seen that one first, although it's not compulsory. I mean, nothing is. Just live your own lives, okay? <laughs> So here we are in After Effects. First off, I brought in my background footage, which is me stood in a garden half naked. Your footage will probably be different. Uh, then I did a quick sky replacement. I used the luma key effect to key out the sky and then made a fresh duplicate without the luma key and drew a rough mask over the house and background to fill any holes that were created by the luma key. Next, I went over to Pixabay and grabbed an image of a lovely cloudy sky. I stuck this right at the bottom of the layer stack and added a hue and saturation effect and adjusted it to match the footage. Now it's time to make our main shadow. I actually made this originally in Cinema 4D, but I wanted to keep this tutorial all within After Effects. And I think this method actually works pretty well too. For this, I built the main parts of our scene out of 3D solid layers. So I started out by making a solid, rotating it 90 degrees and moving the camera up until it roughly aligned with the ground in my footage. I then duplicated this layer and repositioned my anchor point to the edge before rotating and scaling it to make the first wall. By duplicating your layers like this and moving the anchor point to the edge and rotating them into place, you can quickly build the scene with each layer perfectly butting up against the other. To do this, I used a plugin called Motion2, but you can also use Reposition Anchor Point, which is free on aescripts.com and does the exact same job. I kept duplicating the layers, changing the anchor point and rotating them to build each part of the house. I also used the corner pin effect to make the slanted sides of the roof um, and also on any layers that just didn't quite line up properly. I then pre-composed all these layers with my camera and added a white fill to all of those layers. Now you could also just change the color of those layers in your solid layer settings, but this was just easier. To make the shadow, I first made a spotlight and positioned it to where I wanted the sun to be and animated the rotation and orientation so that the scene goes from complete darkness to fully illuminated. Now this can take some time to get right and you'll also want to adjust the cone angle and the intensity of the spotlight so that the 3D layers are completely white at the end. I then added a linear wipe to my ground plane to feather out the horizon so there wouldn't be any harsh lines when we use it for the shadow. Now back in my main comp, I made an adjustment layer, added an exposure effect and lowered that exposure. Then I used the shadow mat comp that I just created as a luma mat to reveal the adjustment layer. And now we have the main part of the shadow. Next, I roughly masked out the secondary elements in the scene, bushes, trees, and the areas in the background. I also used the luma key on these layers to remove the sky. I then applied the exposure effect to each layer and one by one animated a large elliptical feathered mask to reveal each element and then adjusted the timing to work with the main shadow. This process again takes some time and some fiddling around with the timings to get it working well. And finally, what I like to do whenever I'm compositing is to add a rough grade over everything with some contrast and saturation to check that it's all working nicely together. And of course, stick on a letterbox to make it look sexy. And, oh, and finally, you could pre-compose all your layers and add a little scale in or a tilt to bring some fake camera movement into the shot. You could even try doing some camera wobble for that handheld feel, which should help sell it even more. And there you go. That's how I made my massive shadow solar eclipse shot thing. I'll also put a link in the description to the background footage if you want to have a play for yourself. 
So, like I said at the start, I partnered with AccuSonos on this video, and they were kind enough to give me a license of their Era 4 audio plugins bundle, uh, which is great. But they were also even kinder to give me another license to give away to one of you lucky lot. So hang around to the end of the video, and I promise I will let you know how you can win one. The beauty of these plugins is in their simplicity. You don't get thousands of knobs and sliders that hurt your brain. You don't need them. The plugin does all the heavy lifting for you. What you do get though is a simple, clean interface that couldn't be easier to use. And one of the reasons I really want to try out these plugins was for the reverb remover. I've just moved offices and the new office is pretty big and there's lots of hard surfaces, so lots of reverb. But after doing a test and trying out the reverb remover coupled with the noise remover, I was really quite surprised at the difference it made. And now I can make my tutorials in this cavernous room and make it listenable. Just to show you, here's what the room sounds like before putting any effects on. It was an itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, yellow polka dot bikini that she wore for the first time today. And just with a few clicks, here's what it sounds like with the noise remover and the reverb remover. It was an itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, yellow polka dot bikini that she wore for the first time today. It was an itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, yellow polka dot bikini that she wore for the first time today. So yeah, I hope you can hear the difference there. Um, I definitely can. Now, the plugins aren't just restricted to Premiere. You can also use them in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci, Logic Pro, Audition, Avid, and more. So how can you get hold of these awesome plugins for free? Well, it's pretty easy. Like this video and subscribe to the channel, and then find me on social media and send me the answer to the following question. In my climate change collaboration with Curtis Bounty, what percentage was my phone battery at during the video? And I'll put all the details in the description, including my social media links. So that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and look forward to seeing you guys in the comments. Bye. Look at this.